Okay. Good morning, everyone. We're going to start with some pain this morning. So who has built the model? Who has tried, who followed, tried to follow the instructions and who succeeded? Let's start with the first question. Who tried? That's about three quarters of the room. And how many actually built it and ran it? And that's about half the room. So we can skip this. Let's move on to Steve's section. No, um, no uh, all right. So today, um, in this first part, I'm going to go over how to build it, even if you've already done it. Um, I think it will be useful to all explain what all the arcane things are that happened. Okay, so I'm going to build this along with you to show you how easy it is. So, um, so uh, by the way, uh, these slides are online. Um, they're not necessarily any different from what's on the wiki, at least we hope not. Um, it's just myname.org slash mom6workshop slash build.html. You can drop the last one if you really want to. Um, so uh, before you do this, uh, this is not our responsibility, but to build this, you do need some software already set up on your machine. This is the most painful part, by the way. Um, if people want to uh, chime in with the problems they had, I don't have a lot of content. This is really meant to be an interactive session, I should say, as much as we can do in this room. But uh, you do need a compiler, a Fortran compiler. Uh, you need MPI because that's how we do our parallelization and you need NetCDF. Um, so it's not, there's different ways to get these. On Gaia, they're already set up, but you do need to enable them through the module system. Um, there's a command module purge, which cleans out all modules. Never do that on Gaia, you will regret it. So instead you have to manually remove and add things gradually. But in this case, these, are, these three commands will set you up. The MPI comes in implicitly on Gaia. Uh, Stellar, I don't use Stellar, but I'm told this works. You can purge on Stellar. And uh, this will set up all your things. Uh, you do need to add uh, HDF5 as well, because uh, it's a dependency in NetCDF. Um, it's not interesting. Just do it. Uh, things get harder on your own personal machines. Uh, how many of you actually got it running on your personal machines? Well, so, so I missed the hands. Uh, I, I think I saw it was about a third of you. That's good. Uh, that'll be nice. It's good to know how to do it locally, because machines go down all the time. Uh, you have these are this is the instructions for Ubuntu. I'm not going to go over them. Um, Mac OS is a more interesting case because there's two different ways to do it. And uh, just to clarify, if you didn't do it on your machine, there's no problem. <laughs> it's okay. Like this will all work on Gaia. Um, but anyway, it's a drama there. Um, we can talk about it um, during the day. If, I think if people have questions and anybody wants to go, any of the others want to go help them out, I think this is a good time for that. Uh, so I think um, I don't mind. I think uh, we're okay with that. So uh, first we get the repository. This is actually what you might call a monorepo. It's a bunch of repositories in a big macro repository. Um, so I will do that along with you just to show how it works. Got it. All right, so uh, the, the thing here that you might not have seen is um, the recursive flag. This is very important because we have things called submodules in our modules. And this machine is not fun. So um, that's, that's one, if you miss it, I'll there's a step in the slides that explain how to bail yourself out. What is this? Thank you. Yeah, it seems I'm the one who can't build the model. Uh, it's in here twice. There's a hyphen. So um, while that's checking out, I will say there is a command you can do here to pull those submodules in if you forget to do the recursive. If you do this enough times, you will forget many times. Uh, so that's still coming in. It's pretty big. So yeah, I mean, I, I would say even if you've done it before, let's just follow along. Uh, so now that we're in there, uh, you look inside. 
it will create a directory. And inside there's all sorts of projects. Uh, these are kind of the experiments. And then inside it is the models in the source directory. And this is where, this is where all the codes are. Uh, we don't need to dive into them just yet, but um, in this directory, we're going to make a directory we call build. You can call it whatever you want. Uh, we'll just go to the slides to catch up. All right, so um, the two quirks I would say about building on this machine are two things, uh, two tools that GFDL has called list pads and MKMF. Uh, the first one is kind of a glorified find command. It just creates a list of all the files you're going to compile. And uh, the second one is a ancient Perl script and a language from long ago, which uh, will generate a make file out of the list of files that you generated before. Uh, these tools are very much out of the 90s, but they do they are sort of the official way that we build the model here. So um, that's the method we're gonna go over here. Uh, so as I was jumping ahead before, um, first we're going to build a library, it's called FMS. This is the framework library for all GFDL's models. Um, it does stuff like the IO and the parallelization and all these things that are very much not scientific. So um, we're going to go to the slides, excuse me, go to the terminal and hopefully you guys, I, I unfortunately can't have both screens up, but, um, um, but uh, I'll try to do it here. So we'll make a directory called build FMS and we'll go inside it. Now, first we're gonna use that list pads tool. And in order to use it, we have to go back up to the MKMF directory where these tools are kept. And uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is this flag dash L, which I'll explain in a minute. And then the next is I'm going to just go to the source code directory for FMS. And if I run it, I have created my manifest. So if I look in there, you see it's just a bunch of files. It's basically every Fortran and associated file that you need to build the model. So um, if I go back, that's what this uh, slide says. And uh, in there, that flag dash L, uh, you do need that dash L because it follows symbolic links. Uh, because for because of the ways we have it set up, there are a lot of symbolic links hiding inside the repository. So uh, don't forget that flag. And the rest of it is just listing all the directories you want to search for files. So the next part, um, it, we're going to generate the make file. We're going to use the MKMF tool. So first I will do it and then I will explain it. So I'll come back to this slide. So if you wanna follow along with me, that's fine. I'm going into the MKMF directory and I'm running it. Uh, the first thing, I'm, I'm gonna split this up into multiple lines with the uh, right slash, you don't have to do that. So first I'm gonna specify a template file, which I'll get into. That's also in the MKMF directory. And we're going to use the one specific for this machine. We're going to set a target with this dash P flag. We're going to call it libfms because it's the library. And then we're going to do this, set these things called directives. They're just macros. They turn on things that you need. Whoops, I made a mistake. Now we got to start all over. What's that? It's not my computer, guys, sorry. And I think I'm done. Let's check. Oh, and then you got to put the, the, the name of the list of files, path name. So I've done that and I've generated a make file. And now I can look in there and it's completely illegible. It's not supposed to be legible. And, uh, but the main thing is we use it. So I will use dash J, which makes it parallel. Yeah, I have a section on that in a minute. Yeah, I, I just want to get it going because I'm going to have a, I'm going to be waiting around a long time while this builds, so um, I'm trying to front load it. <laughs> uh, so we have these flags. Turn on netcdf. Uh, we have something called repro mode, which I'll also explain, and that should get us going. And we're building, so this is going to take about five to ten <laughs> five minutes. So we have a lot of time to kill, which is why I was jumping ahead in a lot of that that explanation. Yes, I'm going to show you in a minute. Yeah. Um, so what did I just do? 
So uh, this is what I did. Um, I ran this, this uh, MKMF script. I gave it the template command, which I'll go into in a minute. I set a target, libfms, and then I specified some uh, macros that need to be set to make it work. Uh, the first one turns on the MPI, and the second one turns on netcdf. Um, and, and then finally, I gave it the list of files um, that I need to compile. And then what happened, there are these two extra flags that are inside the make file template. Um, there are a few of these. I will go over them in a minute, but that's how we build it. Uh, so this slide explains what those, what those flags are. Um, what you need, the, hard, the hardest thing on going on any new machine is figuring out how to construct a template for it. Uh, best guess is you'll take one of the existing ones and then you'll modify it for your machine. I'm gonna open it up in a minute and show you how it looks. Um, the dash P is the program. It's really more like the target. Uh, and C are the uh, preprocessor flags that I mentioned. Um, this is what the template looks like. So it looks, um, if anyone is familiar with a lot of uh, the GNU uh, conventional flags for building stuff, FC is usually Fortran compiler. CC is C compiler, which you do need for FMS, by the way. Um, and if you go down, um, these are sort of very GFEL specific things that we chuck into these files. Uh, debug is one of the modes we use. It's, it's not one that's not necessarily very fast, but does provide a lot of information when it crashes. Uh, repro is a much faster mode, but is designed to be reproducible so that you get the same results uh, no matter how you run it. And the rest of these actually I don't use very often. Um, so I'm probably not gonna comment on them, uh, but they are settings that were introduced over time to get things working. Uh, NetCDF is done to specify the version of NetCDF. It's actually not so important anymore. It was more a bigger deal when NetCDF was transitioning to version four. Nowadays, I don't think it really matters what you put in there, but we still put three. <laughs> um, what else we got? And if you look inside here, um, this is where you'll have to kind of understand a bit about your machine. Uh, you Often, if you go to a new machine, you're going to have to understand what flags you need. For example, these are flags we need to get it compiling with the GNU compiler uh, on, on a, a typical Linux machine. And so if we were, say, designing this template for an Intel compiler, we would have completely different flags in here. Um, so I, I, can't, I can't really get into the nature of those flags, but um, that's, that's something you have to kind of educate yourself on or get help with. And the same thing with the C compiler. And there are these optimization settings um, that we get into. These are related to the repro and, and the debug modes. So um, this was kind of where we got it all started. And did anybody, was everybody able to, did anyone try this and was unable to generate the list of files? I will, if there's any questions on this step, um, I'll just let me know. And then the next part was generating the make file. Just two comments. If, if you've successfully started compiling, you will see lots of warnings from some of the code that warnings are allowed. It's errors that we don't like. And then the other one is if you're using Ubuntu, there are, there are different flavors of Ubuntu. If you go to the wiki page, there's a mapping between the version of Ubuntu and the template to use, which is a good guidance. If you're, if you're having trouble getting some of the link steps or the compilers giving you compiler errors, it's probably because we need to change the version of the template you're using. All right, so um, feel free to tap away. Um, but those of you that want to listen, now we're going to actually build mom. So if, if assuming you've all sweat through that process, you should all understand it pretty well now. Um, so we're going to create a new directory called ocean only. You can actually name it whatever you want. And then we're going to run that list pads again. Now the difference this time is we're not just going to have one directory. We're going to have one, two, three, four, five, six directories. <laughs> 
And uh, we're going the, the thing is, when you build MOM6, you have to sort of pick and choose which directories you're going to use in order to configure it. We'll, we'll get into what that means and what that's about probably tomorrow, maybe today, I don't know. But um, so the, the deal is that you need to run list paths in a very deliberate way. For you guys, it's just cut and paste. But um, you know, to understand what's going on uh, someday, uh, you might need to understand specifically. So um, we're going to make that ocean only directory here. And we're going to run that list paths again. And now we have a whole bunch of directories, which I will talk about a little bit in a minute. And now we're going to do the MKMF again. Oh, this is where I talked about it, but I'll come back to it. Um, Now, uh, as before, there's the template um, and there's the dash P. So the target now is mom six, excuse me, there. Uh, the two new ones here are the dash O, which is stands for other flags. So it's just an extra flag we're going to append to every single file we compile. And then the dash L, which are the linking flags or the libraries. That's where we're gonna bring FMS into the build. Oops, sorry, touch screen. So other than that, it sort of follows the same format. So we go back here. I'm going to put it in. We have a new make file. I'm going to do these things again, which I probably don't need to do, but I will put them in anyway. And I'll build it. So that's running. That works for me, obviously. There's no problems for the rest of you. And uh, so what were so while that's building, um, what were those directories? Well, um, we support multiple frameworks. Uh, we support multiple versions of FS, FMS, I should say. Uh, so in this case, the links are set up to work with what we call FMS1. Uh, that's an older version of FMS that we currently support, um, long story. Uh, and now the second directory listed there is what we call the memory layout. I won't, I'll explain it uh, tomorrow what that means, but we have two ways of uh, representing fields, symmetric or non-symmetric, actually have three ways. Um, the third directory there is the target. So that's actually kind of the actual program. So in a way, mom is kind of like a library that you bring into a model. And uh, so we're using what's called solo driver, which is just ocean only. And uh, that just runs mom itself without any other uh, coupling to other models like sys or atmosphere or whatever. And then finally, uh, we have what's called the external here. This is where we sort of bring in outside dependencies uh, it's it's sort of software that that doesn't necessarily need to be in the model, but you might want to bring it in or replace an existing one. Uh, examples of that are like uh, data assimilation. Uh, we have a new Python interface that we're working on at the moment. Uh, so these are kind of like optionals that you bring in. They're external. So uh, that build is generally faster, but it is not done yet. So um, I would say everybody, let's try to do this. We're not going to wait around. We're not gonna spend as much time, but um, presumably if you got through the first part, this part should not be hard for you. So uh, this was the command to run it. Uh, I would recommend going to the website, cutting and pasting, don't type that out, um, <laughs> or getting it from the wiki. Um, if anyone needs the link, I can put it back up. Um, and I'm not gonna keep that up there. And then running the MKMF and making. So does anyone need me to put, um, those slides up, uh, uh, web links, raise your hand now. Okay, everyone's got it. And um, we'll, that's right. Yeah, again, I, I put that template in there as a, as a placeholder. I think in the future, I'll actually make it obviously blank, like fill in the blank. Um, Yeah, I'm only gonna um, devote, a, we're only gonna say uh, about five minutes to do this just cause of time and we want Steve to get started. But um, that is pretty much what we have to do. That feel, that that will end wrap up the session. There's some extra exercises if you wanna do them, but they're not a big deal. Yeah. If you got it working, great. If you didn't, you can do it during Steve's talk. Just kidding. Um, 
Um, yeah. Um, all right, so now that we've got it built, oh, did I build it? Um, we're gonna just run it and see if it worked. So yeah, so we're gonna go back, 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 and go into the ocean only double gyre directory. And we're gonna step up, go into that build directory into ocean only and run mom six. And it's running for me. <laughs> so I did it, everybody, I did it. Um, and it failed because I, because FMS has this stupid thing where you have to make a directory called restore. So <laughs> now if I run it again, it will work. And now you can really clap for me. Uh, now, how many of you were able to? Now, how many of you were able to build the model? Three people. Okay, so <laughs> massive failure. No, uh, but let let's hope more of you than that were able to do it. Um, uh, okay, um, the instructions are here to try it, but I think uh, how do I? Why do I have a coffee break? And we can, uh, yeah. Well, you can harass me. But I think in the very last three minutes, I want to demo something that we've been working on to eliminate all this garbage that I just put you through. So um, we have something called an autocomp build. So in, so in this, um, this isn't even gonna work, is it? So these are not steps I expect you to replicate. All I want to do here is show, you know what, I'm gonna do the easy version. If I just go in this directory and make, this is compiling FMS and mom six and running our test suite. And I didn't have to give it a template file. And it will work on Linux, it'll work on Gaia, it'll work on Macs, it'll work on Windows Linux. So, we went through all that pain deliberately so you would understand how things work at GFDL and how to build the model. But we also recognize there's a much better way to do things. And you can see that I just got started running building FMS without typing in any of those commands. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't, you know, it, it's, you know, it's not a perfect process yet. Uh, we, we have, we've have had people find issues with it on Macs, but um, for the most part, what it's doing is it's running lots of test programs to work out all those details in the template file for you so you don't have to do it. So um, I, we will talk more about this on Tuesday, uh, depending on how that goes. But um, that is how you build the model. And this is the other way you build the model. <laughs> so if I had done it that way, it would have been five minutes and we would have all just ended. Um, but yeah, that's all I got. Uh, I'm done, Steve, If you, whenever you're ready. Yeah. I'm not going to, this is not going to finish. Okay. Thank you, Marshall. Thank you, Marshall.